In the previous lecture, we have discussed about one of the most important vector operation, which was adding elements to a vector. Now, in this lecture, we will discuss some more vector operations and we will also quickly see each of their working in Visual Studio Code to make it clear. So, let's begin. So, firstly, we have the empty operation. So, this is a syntax v dot empty where v represents the name of the vector followed by the dot and then the empty operation. Now, what this does is it returns true if v is empty and it returns false if v is not empty. So, this is basically used to check whether a vector is empty or not. So, let's go to Visual Studio Code and just see it's working. So, in Visual Studio Code here, I have written a small program where I have declared a vector of the type integer called myVec and then here in the cout I am saying is myVec empty and then here we are using the empty operation. So the name of the vector is myVec so myVec dot empty and then a new line here and next I am adding some values to this myVec 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then I am again printing is myVec empty now and again the empty operation is used on the myVec vector. So, according to what we studied, in this first case, it should return true because myVec is empty in the beginning and in the next case, since we have added some elements to the myVec vector, it should return false because it is not empty anymore. So, let's run the program and see if it is working as expected. The name of the program is vector underscore ops dot cpp. Alright, so as I have compiled and run this program, you can see in the first case, it printed 1 because the vector was initially empty and after adding elements to the vector when we printed this part it returned 0 which is false because the vector is now not empty. So, we see that it is working as expected. Alright, now coming to the next operation we have the size operation. Now, what this size operation does is it returns the number of elements in the vector v. So, this is the syntax name of the vector followed by dot and the size operation which would just check how many elements are there in that vector and it would just return the size of that vector. So, let us just see it's working in VS Code. Okay, so here I am using the same code again which we have used previously and I have just added one more line here which is line number 11 where it says size of myVec equal to and here inside cout itself I am writing myVec dot size. So, the name of the vector is myVec followed by dot and then the size operation. So, let us check what is the size of this vector. As you can see, myVec has 5 elements and ideally it should return 5. So, let's see if it is working as expected. So, as I run this program, you can see size of myVec is equal to 5. So, it computed the size of the vector correctly. Alright, now coming to the next one, we have the pushback operation. So, this was something we already discussed in a great detail in the previous lecture. We will just recap this again. So, this is basically going to add an element with the value t to the end of v. So, v is the name of the vector and then the pushback operation would add an element which is specified in this parenthesis t to the end of this vector. So, let us also run this in VS Code. So, here as you can see, I have added some more lines here starting from line number 12 where I am trying to push the value 6 into this vector myVec. So, myVec dot pushback and then I specify 6 within parenthesis. So, what this should ideally do is it should push this value 6 to the end of this vector called myVec. And then I am running a range for statement over this vector called myVec using the integer index i and I am just printing out that i separated by spaces. So, what I am trying to do is I am just trying to print all the elements that are there in the vector myVec in order to just verify if this element that we added has actually been added successfully. Okay, let's run this program. You can see here now this is the new vector and you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and now 6 is also added. Initially, it was only till 5 but now we have 6 added to it. So, we can see that the pushback operation also worked correctly. Alright, now coming to the next one, we have v of n. Now, what this does is it returns a reference to the element at the position n in v. That means, v is the vector and n will return the element that is at the nth position of this vector v. Let's see it's working. Okay, so coming back to our program, I have added one more line which is line number 15 where I am trying to print the third element in myVec is and I am using that operation that we just saw now. I say myVec which is the name of the vector and within square brackets I specify 2. 
That means at the second index, whatever element is there in this vector called myVec, that should be printed. So ideally, what should it be? If you look here, our vector is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we also added 6 previously. So it actually has 6 elements, and the indexing always starts from 0. So 0, 1, 2. So this is the second index or the third element in the vector. So it should print 3. So let's see if it is working as expected. Now you can see the third element in myVec is equal to 3. So 3 is printed correctly. It exactly returned the element at the second index of the vector myVec. Now coming to the next one, we have something called v1 equal to v2. Now what is this? This replaces the elements in v1 with a copy of the elements in v2. So v1 and v2 both are vectors and what this would do is whatever elements are there in v2, that will be copied to v1. So all the elements of v1 will be replaced by the elements of v2. So let's see it's working. Now coming back to our program, you can see that I have added a few more lines starting from line number 16. And if you take a close look at this, you can see that I am declaring one more vector here called my vec2, which is also of the type integer. And I have put some values in it 7, 8, 9, 10. And then here we are making use of the operation that we have discussed. And I'm saying myVec equal to myVec2. So we know that myVec was containing the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now I am going to replace all of them with the elements in myVec2, which is 7, 8, 9, 10. So this operation would replace all the elements of myVec with the elements in myVec2. And again, I am printing out the new values in myVec using a range for statement, which would run over this myVec using the index i and I am printing i. So basically it should print all the elements in myVec. So let's see if it is working as expected. We saw that myVec was containing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then now the new values in myVec is 7, 8, 9, 10. So all the values of myVec got replaced with the values in myVec2 which was 7, 8, 9, 10. Now coming to the next one, we have v1 equal to a, b, c and so on. So what this does is, it replaces the elements in v1 with a copy of the elements in the comma separated list. So when we specify like this, all the elements of v1 would be replaced by the elements in this comma separated list. So we will try to run this program in VS Code. We will try to replace all the elements that are there in our existing vector with some new values now. Okay, so coming back to our program, here I have added some more lines from line number 21. And here, as you can see, I am trying to replace all the values of myVec with these new values here in this comma separated list. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I am trying to add these values to myVec. And remember, by doing this, it is not going to append these values to the existing vector, but it is going to replace it entirely with these new values. So if you want to append something, remember what we have to use, it is the pushback operation that we have to use. So now I am replacing all the values with these values and then I am trying to print them out again using a range for statement like we did before. So let me run it. Now you can see the latest values in myVec were 7, 8, 9, 10 and now they got replaced with these new values that we added. So the current latest values in myVec are 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now coming to the next one, we have v1 and we have this double equal to symbol and v2. Now what this does is v1 and v2 are equal if they have the same number of elements and each element in v1 is equal to the corresponding element in v2. So this basically is a comparison where we are trying to compare two vectors v1 and v2. And what is the condition for them to be completely equal? v1 and v2 are said to be equal if the elements in both v1 and v2 are having the same count. And also each of the elements in v1 should be exactly equal to the corresponding element in v2. Okay, let's see it's working. So as you can see here, I have added a few more lines starting from line number 25. And here I am using an if else statement in order to compare the vectors myVec and myVec2. So we are using that operation that we just saw now. So I am comparing myVec and myVec2. So if myVec is equal to myVec2, then the two vectors are equal. And if this condition is not true, then it should print the two vectors are not equal. So take a moment to just think what the output would be. As you know, 
MyVec. The latest values that we have in MyVec are 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And what is the latest values that we have in MyVec 2? In MyVec 2, we have 7, 8, 9, 10. So in this case, we can see that the number of elements in MyVec is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And in this case, it is 1, 2, 3, 4. So the number of elements are not equal and also the corresponding elements are not equal. Even if the count were the same, the corresponding values also has to be equal for this condition to yield true. So in both cases, we see that this is going to be false because the count is also not the same and the corresponding values are also not same. Here we have 7, here we have 11. Here the second one is 8, but here it is 12 and so on. So let us run and see if it is working as expected. So here as you can see, the output says the two vectors are not equal because the count as well as the corresponding elements are not equal. Now we have almost come to the end of these vector operations and we have just a few more like these. V1 not equal to V2, V1 is less than V2, V1 is greater than V2 and V1 is less than or equal to V2, V1 is greater than or equal to V2. Now all these they have their normal meanings using the dictionary orderings. So these are also basically conditions used to compare two vectors and all of them have the normal meanings that we usually have using the dictionary ordering. Alright, so those were some of the basic vector operations that you need to keep in mind while working with vectors and I hope they were all clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.